It is Northern Gaming versus Cow Nose as the midseason mayhem continues. Over to the commentary desk with Shogun and Lawler. Take it away, guys. Okay, so Lawler just confirmed to me. Today we've had pigs, monkeys, ducks. We've just had a giraffe. This is qu quickly turning into Animal Farm. Yeah, I don't know what that was, um, but it was something. It was a thing that happened <laughs> on a broadcast. away from it, yeah. <laughs> yes. What well on Gibbs. Well done. Uh, well Where do we go from that one? <laughs> well done. Well, let's uh, let's go down. Oh, they're not helping out here. Northern Gaming's got a mammal, and we've got a cow. This is. Oh no. Ah, uh, right. Animal, Animal Farm, Farm is. RLCS it's is mayhem, guys. Is what we, it's no, crazy. That doesn't even explain this. Okay. It just this, mayhem. Just we'll just go it. with it on this one. Northern Gaming versus Cow Nose. and this is going to be interesting to see how they decide to go about this. Northern Gaming's got one of the better rotations in the league, but can they apply that in some way? to this drop shot game, the game mode that we are going to always use to start off our seri series here in Mid-Season Mayhem. Remember, you guys can get your voices heard for games three and four by voting on both the Mutator and the map that we are going to be play on, playing on. Well, it looks like Ball's already on phase three. Tons of damage coming out, but not receiving the full benefit as it's a little bit further back in the field. It doesn't spread out, it just dissipates. The pressure gets applied. There you go for Kauno. is barely going off the ground, getting some damage. Yep, and that's a lot of damage coming out there. For those of you that don't necessarily play that much drop shot, the best way of knowing about it is if the ball looks like it's about to do a lot of damage, it's because it probably is about to do a lot of damage. Thanks, John. Perfect, perfect explanation. I like it. Yes. If it looks evil, probably is evil. It's also got that <laughs> like loud whirl to it when it hits phase three, as you'll be able to hear just about now. The best part about Phase 3 is not just, like, the fact that it does a ton of damage, but the way that it looks. Like, they did a really good job. Like, it's all lightning-y, and it's like voltaic wheels, but in a ball. I just like know? that it explodes out of the ball when you get to Phase 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best part about it is Dan Tizzle's going to put that one over to Zenzus. Very important to always get double touches using multiple parts of your team. Otherwise, your opponents almost always can predict it, and that's going to be a lot of damage coming through. A gate has opened up on the blue side. Devo misses that and gets a lot of damage, double damage. And Gate has got much bigger there for this Northern Gaming squad. Yeah, you're seeing Northern Gaming doing a really good job with misdirection. The biggest problem is with the way that the, the Octagon is shaped, is that the ball always kind of keeps just going and following around at that corner. And because of that, they're attacking it from the opposite end, allows it to cut back inside to apply some damage on those tiles that we see below. As we mentioned earlier, if it is blue, it is your oh, side. What a you pass. cannot get damaged, but in that case, you have just been scored on Kauno's take a lead. Damage or not, beautiful pass from Niels coming out right into the middle to a waiting Zen, who's literally just sitting on top of the tile, just like, yeah, pass it, I'll drop it in. Drop shot it in. I got this. That might legitimately be the best strategy I've seen so far out of drop shot. Just get the pass over and immediately put that down. Do not give your opponents any times to react. And Kauno's. I've got themselves an early lead. They've obviously got that gate on the back end of their field. But they've got time to do damage. Whilst Northern Gaming will try and score as quickly as possible. But all of this damage makes puts them further and further behind. And we saw in the last game that you can go 2-0 well up. Nice shot coming out from Remco, but saved by Dans. As Devo tries to get rid of that one. But Zenzus and the rest of Kaunos doing a very good job of shadowing their opposing team. Yeah, need to be careful though as they sent two up on that hit. Still doing a good job of spreading out the field as this ball gets played down into the other corner. Devo's gonna try to take a touch, but plays it light easily for Niels to rebuttal. But as it goes back and forth, I sounded like Wave Punk there. My apologies. Back and forth. Well, I've got to ask you a question on this one. Uh oh. It, when it comes to Rocket League, is the most disheartening thing in the world when you hit that ball in phase three and it hits that lip? on the other end of the yeah, field. Yeah, so like the, I guess, yeah, the lip's the best way to tell it, but the, kind of like the trimming of the map. There's one in the middle that separates the halves and then there's one that goes around the edge. Like those are fair play. You can use those to kind of like saving grace it as it's about to hit. Just so often you think you can get a load of damage coming out, it hits that and you get no damage whatsoever. As Kauno still in the lead. Time is ticking away actually for Northern Gaming. who haven't really done too much extra damage in the last minute or so. They've got plenty to aim for, though. As Remco gets that one down, they're still really far away from the gate that they have primed. And Kaunos can defend that yet again. 1-0 is a very rare scoreline in a game mode like this, but we could see it. 
Now, a lot of the times, too, in situations like this, these guys just stop trying to place it and will actually jump and pinch it into the ground, but a ton of damage coming out for Kaunos as they're looking very good right now, opening up even more gates. Now it's just a matter of putting it in one of them. Oh, Maestro and Remco getting the rotation wrong oh there, and it has goodness. cost them so, so much. Kaunos, even if they do get scored on here, got a huge advantage. But even then, Northern Gaming have to find a way through. Kauno is always protecting the correct spots of this goal, no matter how big it is. And trust me, at this point, it is a chasm. Well, it's as you stated, no matter what happens, they're in a very comfortable situation if we see Northern Gaming get a goal out as a shot going off just missing to the right. It's so big Rempo. at this point, you can't possibly miss it. No, that is a massive gate on the left-hand side for this Kauno squad. Kauno's still playing keep away. But yep, Northern Gaming, they've got so much to aim for, but Kauno's have got it covered every single time, now forcing it back into that end. And we could see a 1-0 victory here. 15 seconds remaining in this matchup, and Maestro has got to deal with this. They've got their own goal to worry about, let alone scoring one onto the Kauno's end, and Kauno's just going to go completely onto defense. Nice challenge there from Zenzus. That's going to be dangerous. Now, if that ball touches the floor anywhere that is not in that goal, this match is going to end, and it has done so. Kaunos shut out Northern Gaming in game one. Looking really strong. The amount of damage alone from both sides, like you're seeing Dan with more damage than the entire other team. That is incredible. That's just the defense on Kaunos there. Just so good. It's really hard to know where to position yourself because yeah, there's a lot of players out there that are very good to like just switch the ball at the very last moment. I mean, we right. see players like Scrub Killer do it in ones. Very good at just leaving and just go, right, ball's over the top of you now. Yeah, a lot of it had to do like, I think the big difference in threes, because obviously we've played a lot of ones, but in threes, like, you have to have that trust, and it really shows, like, the ability to just say, okay, you two go for it, I'll sit waiting for that pass. I know it's inevitably, inevitably going to get to me at some point. And it paid off, like, that pass inside, probably the best that we've seen so far compared to NA. Yes. Uh, just right inside, put it right in the net. Like, there was nothing Northern Gaming could do about it. Yep, only one goal coming out here, but what a goal it was there. Passing plays coming out, like, on the ground passing plays, really impressive, just putting it straight down. Right. One thing we haven't seen at all today is actually someone trying to pinch the ball against the floor, yeah. which is a very good way of, if you can get it on top of an already primed tile, just put it straight down. You can probably get a double touch onto it, which means you can get an immediate goal out of nowhere. No one really going for it. I don't think anyone's even had the space no, for I it, think, though. I think it's difficult in this, in this kind of level of play. You're going to see players way too many times to where as soon as you go for an air dribble, if you don't follow it perfectly or get kind of like an advantage over the top with a, like a touch that catches them off guard, it doesn't matter, but the benefit of Mayhem today is once you get used to one mode, we switch it to another. We are now on to Rumble. Certainly our flip side tactics in the last series got beat in that drop shot game and could not recover. Now Northern Gaming, will they have a repeat or can they take this game to Kaunos and pick up their first win of the series? We have now got ourselves some items and put straight into the bottom. Remco steals that one with the plunger. Not that it would have mattered. These guys are trying to secure a Normie immediately as they have the advantage in that aspect. Devo comes in, but he actually looked like he used a grapple there to just put the pace like perfectly straight. Do you know what that was? That was revenge for last week. Devo stole Remco's incredible <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. wall yeah, aerial. Wall hit and he just cherry picked it at the end. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, yep, I think they're even at this point. As Maestro is going to put this one all the way down to the other end. Trying to get some normie goals, but nothing coming out there. And we've now got ourselves some items. Although Niels Cook, despite being disrupted, has got the plunger. And a plunger who gets disrupted probably won't care because they're heading towards your net anyway. The way that you see these guys using the grapple hook, Dan is all. That has got to be one of the best uses of that frozen ball I've ever seen. Gets it right in front of the defender who just flies past it. Yeah, tries to bring it down, but we talk about it too many times. These guys have hit so much muscle memory when it comes to hitting the ball, and as soon as it freezes, everything just gets thrown off. You usually attack to the position where you think the ball is going to be, but if the ball's not moving, as obviously stated, you miss. Yes, yes you do. That's what's going to be left for the time being. I'm thankful. We've got pretty much no normie goals. Remco's touch onto that prevented the last one from being a normie goal. Or the first one. It's Dan. Double boots we see coming the, through. Uses the boot instead of hitting the ball. And that's going to be an opportunity there, but Maestro takes that one just over the top. Can't continue that play, however. Devo. They one right over to the side, but Dan is going to get that one into the corner. 
Frozen Ball there. That means the Magnet's going to have no effect. There's spikes, though. They always have an effect. It's going to run out of time, though. Can he try and get this one towards the net? And Zenzus using those spikes to get around the defense. Yeah, wins the 50-50 like, to a whole different degree. But you can tell as soon as he lands, that ball actually pops off. I'm not sure if the guy above him got a touch yeah. on it. But if not, I think a power-up was using the, it uh, fell off. The camera did follow Remco on that one, so I can only assume that at least the wheels touched. Okay. And that's why the ball popped off afterwards. Either way, good follow-ups afterwards. Doesn't get uh, denied by all the power-ups that were used. As it does take them 10 seconds to come back. High-scoring game. A rumble there, Maestro. Almost had out Zensis there, but luckily had a grapple counter. Ball played over to Devo. We've played that one, and that is going to be a regular redirect, but that is always impressive. Still a great pass play coming out from Northern Gaming. You see Dan try to hit that out, but immediately met, and then Devo, who is already upfield, passes that back inside, just knowing Maestro was on the other side. I mean, did you see that play. again? Remco yet again trying to go for the steal onto that one. I mean, do you blame him? I don't if blame him at all. If there's a time to do it, why not now? Yes, certainly. Especially, I mean, I would still hold bad blood after... <laughs> He also, like, I mean, Devo even got the, credit for yeah, it in the, the top part, five yeah, plays. The top five were like, wait, deep, what? Like, yeah, he put it in, but <laughs> that was terrible. That was pure evil. Devo, the newcomer onto this team, suddenly feels comfortable if you're stealing goals, stealing goals like that from your team. It's now 2v1. Zenzis by himself tries to use the power fist. He's got that one away from the magnet. Niels Cook. Gets switched out there by Devo, and Remco is then allowed to clear that one away. There is the Tornado, one of the most disruptive ones around here. Pretty yeah, much we, barely being used. Yeah, we actually saw someone score a player rather than the ball with the Tornado yesterday. It's, if, you been, if you didn't see that, check it out. It was hilarious. It's been, like, very rare. I think I've ever seen anyone score. Oh, what a shot! Like that. And Devo, I think he just destroyed our post there, made the goal bigger. I know you're able to demo uh, people, but... Maestro, even though he missed that hit, pulls it back with the plunger and centers it with Devo. And there's no way Devo is going to miss that shot opportunity, especially without much power. 120, 128 kilometers per hour after hitting the post. Could you imagine the speed on that before it hit the post? No, it's crazy how these guys use those power-ups. Even with like the Haymaker, the, the power glove, they'll hit it first and then punch it just to make sure there's a little bit extra speed on top of it. Devo gets a save and then clears that one over to the corner using the boxing glove. So 4-1 is our scoreline. Northern Gaming have responded so well to being shut out in the drop shot game. Devo clears that one over to Maestro. A lot of power onto that shot, but no accuracy is going to result in this being cleared away by Kaunos, who have got so much work to do if they want to get themselves back into it. But we did see yesterday almost a four-goal comeback. And we could see it yet again. That is an open goal. Could, if Niels Cook can get there. Anybody can get there. Oh, there we are, <laughs> yet again. And this is very interesting here. The power here has become one of the most used items for goals. Yeah, it makes me curious on how these guys would handle like a pinball or a mayhem. As the accuracy between these guys at this level is unbelievable, and it just only emphasizes it more. If you put that on net, whether it's a soft tap or not, it's going to go flying. Well, Kaunos have put themselves within touching distance of this scoreline. And with Rumble items on, it only takes a couple of items, probably a plunger, to get yourself back into this match. There's going to be a disruption coming out. Remco gets switched out, but not before he can get a shot to target. And Devo, uh, these guys are having an in-house fight now. Oh, just one power up after another. Zen misses that clear, but Maestro, or Remco, is actually about to get swapped. He ends up being in <laughs> goal, so it actually worked out in favor as it took one of the uh, players out of position on defense. And then Diva with the Magnet, just to pull it in a little bit closer, as the Magnet is stronger the closer you are, you are to it. Yeah, we haven't seen any air dribbles coming out using the Magnet so far. It's because you've pretty much got to get the, mag the ball like, right next to you for the Magnet to be strong enough to do so. Remco still able to play this ball. He's got he's the so Magnet, fast. but he's still he's so going. No. Can't quite turn that one into the net. And Diva has got himself, um, <laughs> yes, quite. <laughs> Everyone trying to take that ball away from Devo. A power fist, some plunger. Nothing can outdo the spikes. Now, they did make some changes. Originally, that stuff didn't have any effect on the spikes, but they realized the spikes were too OP. So now it starts to like tug and pull on them a little bit and literally pulls them away from the net. Getting a demo yet again. The power hitter coming in clutch. Dan is always trying to aerial whilst being disrupted here. Can't quite do it. He gets himself there in time. Maestro shots target, gets the freeze onto the ball. I don't know who used that. Probably a defensive player. 
considering how well Zenzus did react to it. Boot sends us away though. Devo fake onto that. Oh, Boot oh, just what? there, and then the no. power hitter comes oh, out. A, a fist to take the ball away. Oh my goodness, what a team play coming out using those power ups, but it doesn't matter as the counter able to save it. But with only 10 seconds left, it looks like Brother Gaming able to handle this one well and take the victory. Kalos, like uh, they, made it, they made it look respectable. Yeah, a little, a little consolation goal. I'm upset. We had a, a, a certain top five goals there taken away from us by one boxing glove. It was, it was nutty, man. That to was see, incredible. Like, like, usually the boot is not the most wanted power up, but the way they used it, and they had two of them, literally just kicking their way open, kicked the door down into that, into that goal, and then just denied. Well, this is going to mean that for certain we are going to see the map that you guys have voted for as we are guaranteed at least four matches played here. Maestro tries to use the spikes there, but Northern Gaming take a win there, and it was pretty convincing. Yeah, looking very strong. Couple Normie goals, even though power-ups were used towards the end of them. It's just that open field midfield pass play uh, is dangerous, and they're showing that here. But uh, we're going to see Mutators next. I'm kind of curious to what, the, uh, to what the guys in chat well, decided. You said earlier on in this particular game that you wanted to see for Pinball or Mayhem, see how exactly how they would react to it. We're going to see Mayhem. Oh, jeez. So we've already seen how well these guys can hit the ball whilst having the power hitter. Unfortunately, that ball is about to get much more difficult to <laughs> yeah. hit. That is going to bounce everywhere. Yeah, for those that have forgotten about the exact power of form, basically the ball is still the same size. It just moves faster because it's lighter, so it carries quicker. And the biggest benefit is there is unlimited boost. Yes. Meaning that... You These guys, it, muscle memory-wise, are still going to go for the boost because they're just so used to it, even though they don't need to. Yes. I mean, we saw it in the last game mode of pinball in the last series. Mm -hmm. um, players struggle with this. Thankfully yeah. for them, the board is higher. It's also much harder to control, though. No dribbling plays are going to happen in this one. If you like dribbling plays, not happening. If you like to hit, see the ball hit really hard, you're going to like this game mode. It's pretty much how it works. It's like, okay, uh, positioning-wise, someone go to the other side of the field, and then maybe it'll go to you. I don't yeah. know. And then they just hit it hard. And that works towards their own net as well. Sometimes you'll see these guys where they're like, okay, what do we do? And they just like rocket it towards their back wall, and it'll redirect all the way back to the other side of the field. So some interesting stuff. But as they get used to it, usually by the end, uh, we then change the game mode on them again, so it doesn't matter. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, we saw the pinch there going for the kickoff and honestly why not at this point it's not like you're going to be able to cheat up on that kickoff at all so send everyone for it get a brick wall in front of the net a great shot there an even better save from maestro that's going to go all the way down to the other end of the field zenzis got to play that one all the way over to the other side though devo misses that you're going to see a lot of that there but niels cook shot onto target one nil yeah, as that ball is bouncing out, it's just a matter of who reacts to it the best. That bounce normally wouldn't have gone as far as you see Devo trying to get a touch on it. But because he misses, he was able to take and capitalize on that. Just a quick, easy shot. Tons of power. And you're going to see probably the best defensive strategy when a shot comes in in this matchup because you're not able to predict any of these. You're not going to be able to react to it. No one's got reaction times that fast. So you're going to see the great uh, defensive play of Flail and hope <laughs> yeah pretty much now even though in this game mode you're gonna see like for some of the boost maters for spectator it, for some reason doesn't show up it's just part of the part of the system right now oh what what yeah 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 zenzus is gonna put his team 2-0 up here using the wall on this and still ridiculous amounts of power basically find the target no matter how you can well he took notes out of neil's book neil missed it Yes. So he's like, okay, if I don't aim at the net and aim at the wall, maybe it'll then go in. And it worked. It was next level strategy. I feel like people reference drop shot as what? they hit the ball game mode. This one is just hit the ball. And if you hit the target, you've probably scored. Oh, what a shot too. And a lot of the times these guys just put as much power on it. But the benefit of playing it actually off of a bounce is you don't have that issue of it going over. Nice shot by Neil. 3-0, and we're only a minute into this match. Yeah, Kalnos have exploded their way into this matchup. This could be really dangerous as well as the bounce comes out. Remco feathers his boost that time. We usually see them very confident. No stops in that <laughs> boost. They just go straight for it. This time, a, I just want to get it right. <laughs> what? So Maestro just tried to trap it, and it went flying. Why did you then... try and trap it? <laughs> just hit it. 
Just hit it as hard as you can towards their net. Well, that one hits the post and comes all the way out to Devo. You can see this why this one is probably the uh, the most suited to freeze, because if you've got no one back, you're probably scoring an own goal. Maestro puts that one up high. And yet again, Cal knows. Clear that one away. You just need contact onto the ball, and you'll probably be safe. Low in gaming, I see you going for all of these skills and passing plays and teamwork. <laughs> I don't think you've quite got the memo on this. Just hit it hard, man. Just hit it hard. Just hit it really hard. The Team Rocket Special. There's Niels Cook. Clear that one away. Remco. Just gets it if it's the corner, but Northern Gaming, they need to figure this one out here. It seems like Kaunas has just done such a better job of adapting to this particular game mode. No one onto this challenge. Zenzus can put that one up high. Tries to go for the double tap, and he almost got a hold of it. Devo with the save. But we're almost halfway through this matchup, and Northern Gaming still yet to record anything on the board. Despite that, they're doing a much better job with ball possession, getting a ton of touches in a row. Even though all these opportunities are coming through, still nothing as Kaunos and Dan win that 50-50, bringing it to the other side. Fortunately for him, Devo already there to clear it back out. And now we're back to ping pong action. Pinball, we're changing it. It's no longer ping pong because pinball is a mutator setting we use. That's a good idea. I do like the, what Kaunos is actually doing on defense. They're going for... Hitting it really hard. <laughs> well, almost slingshot defense. It's just everyone goes into the net, they pull someone back, and they just launch that person towards the ball. And then that person comes back and they send the next person towards the ball. So always heading in a straight line, always keeping that ball away from their net. That could be dangerous as it drops straight down. If that was a regular ball and it wasn't bouncing as quick and as fast as it is, they probably would have got that. That would have probably been 3-1, but it isn't. It's mayhem. You get nothing normal. No, no, no. It's crazy. Non-standard map is as close to normal as we're getting throughout any of this. Which is weird to say. It is. Usually we lose ourselves if we can see like a Neo Tokyo or a Wasteland during a regular week. This week, that's just standard. Even though it's a non-standard map, yeah. Says it's in a weird the name. way that one Remind works you. out. We're sorry again. Oh, whoa, double demo coming up from Zensis. Doesn't matter though, as the ball is still bouncing up and down. Steve plays a shot off the backboard. Pass opportunity. Snuffed out by Niels. That could drop straight down though, Niels Cook. With the clearance. And I have to say this yet again, Cow knows his defense. Always with someone on the line, but always someone challenging as well. Dan, you were not predicting that. It's Devo, save and a shot at the same time. You can go the <laughs> entire way. Maestro plays off the backboard, and that's going to be going all the way to the other end. We almost went east coast to west coast on that one. We've got less than a minute remaining. And Northern Gaming still yet to put anything in. I don't think they've even got slightly used to these ball physics. No. Who can blame them? No, the big difference, though, is when they're on offense, they try the opposite effect. Rather than, like, your slingshot maneuver you are talking about where they only send one, Northern Gaming sends everybody because it doesn't seem to matter. As long as you can get a hit on it, they're giving themselves a chance. Oh, what a, what a touch. I'm not going to lie. Niels Cook seems like he's the one that's adapted the best to all of this. Is <laughs> Zensis is in the background just chasing Remco forever, and that <laughs> actually might result in a goal. Yeah, we haven't he seen is, No, he's demos. still going for this. Zensis is refusing to give up. I mean, the one thing that you have the ability to, like, really control is demos. You have unlimited boost. It's not like they can outrun you forever. Right? Like, eventually they'll catch I, up. Yeah, certainly is. I just feel like Zenzus was hoping that this one was, like, friendly fire or something like that. <laughs> Give this man friendly fire if he proceeds into the semifinals, because he was just thirsty for demos. <laughs> too, too bad it's not on his own team. I mean, yeah, any explosion on contact is bad, but... He's got to be careful because no one, with, if he's running around that much. And look at those stats. Niels Kirk, um, your standout game was supposed to be during league play. This should not have been your standout week, that Niels Kirk. That stat line is ridiculous. Holy cow. 50% shooting accuracy, tons of saves, only saves for his team. Yeah, That's really impressive. Good. Really good. That's annoyingly impressive. I mean, it's been practicing. Dan did the least on that team. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Like, if you do really good during this, does that like carry over then into league play? And I mean, I've seen. A lot of teams, like especially when Mutators first came out, a lot of them were playing them. Right. And then they went into tournaments and just went, oh, no. <laughs> oh, we don't know how to play this game anymore. Yeah, the nice one we haven't seen. And I, it's kind of weird. Like, Time Warp, I think, is the one that messes up everybody the most. Yes. Because, like, you go to hit it and everything's in super slow-mo. And then you feel like a god when you come back in because you're like, yeah, I know how to do this now. That's actually one of the things I've always wanted to see, though. Is like, if we could get, you know, you can slow down the game mode. There's a Mutator in that. Yeah. I wanted to see if we could slow down the game mode to the lowest one possible. And then play a whole game, record the replay, 
video the whole thing, and then play it back in normal time, and see if you play like a complete god, or if it just looks really weird. I feel like you've got to play really well at that point. You've I mean, got like 10 seconds to figure out that air dribble. You should get it right. Yeah. I, I, the problem is though, if you get it wrong, you've got 20 seconds of looking at your failed air <laughs> dribble. Right. But that's that's why you play it at like super fast speed. So instead of just playing it at normal, put it at like 1.25, and then yeah. you're like, oh yeah, it was just really fast. I, I couldn't do it. You know. Well, we're gonna get the into our post, man. fourth game here. Northern Gaming find themselves one game down, and if they lose this one, they are gonna be out of mid-season mayhem. And could you imagine that? Very first round, very first two games, and we lose Flipside Tactics and Northern Gaming. It could happen. Well, we actually saw quite a few sweeps yesterday. Only one so far, as we saw Northern Gaming able to take game number two in Rumble. But we are now game number four. You guys voted for double goal. My favorite actual uh, non-standard map. Love this map. Yeah, this is actually quite an interesting one, especially the way it's played. And that's going to be Maestro turning that one in early. We only saw double goal once yesterday. We did not see any goals as quick as that. No, you just see this ball played really easily. And it's that wall is weird as it like curves back in. It's just not in the aspect of like a uh, like a wasteland where yeah. it like, tilts back in. But still, really difficult. If you don't get the clear on the opposite side, it's just going to keep playing in. Really easy for the team to uh, keep that offense on. Well, if we play during a uh, regular map, we usually look at this and just go, never challenge in the corner. What are you going to succeed in? What are you going to achieve by challenging in the corner? On this map, go for it. As Remco goes for that one and puts his team 2-0 up. Northern Gaming in the driver's seat right now. Yeah, the initial idea from Niels here was pretty solid. Playing it off that uh, that kind of bent in corner to play it out. But unfortunately, it centers in the middle for an approaching Northern Gaming. As you said, up 2-0. Yet again, only a minute in. Tons of goals already. And as we try and explain how to play this game mode or play this map, Northern Gaming show us how to play this map. Lots of pressure. It's nice to have some visual aid. Yeah. It's like, uh, I mean, I'm a visual learner. Well, there's going to be talk when you can see it with your eyes. It's actually oh. very interesting. Oh. It's very interesting to hear that from someone that does a podcast, but <laughs> my stroke's going to change. No one said it was good. <laughs> Well, you had me on there. Of course it was good. Well, why do you think I had you on there to make up for me, right? You had me on there because you want the video of me on there as Maestro turns in exactly as I am, an ugly goal. <laughs> I'm getting I mean, all the shots in with, there. I would have went with, like, an ugly duckling, you know? An ugly duckling. Oh, I miss Timmy. Yeah, but why did you kill Timmy? <laughs> he, had to, he had to set his wings free and fly away from the nest. <laughs> that was not a nest. He flew away from the <laughs> desk at high speed. Yeah, desk nest. That was cruel. That really was. And it was worth it. No, it, how dare you take his I mean, side I, on I this? I mean, I laughed. <laughs> it was great. It was this good. bromance, every time you speak, this bromance gets further and further away. I do what I can, man. As Dan Tizzle puts that one up high, 3 0. Northern Gaming have taken this one by the scruff of the neck. And Cal knows they are probably going to want to avoid going to yet another Rumble match because Northern Gaming took that very convincingly last time. The shot comes in, and Remco plays that to the side, but more shots coming in from Kaunos. And this game mode, whenever we see it playing to that corner, just the whole game slows completely down because it suddenly becomes like a 1v1 dribbling sort of situation. Right, and it's it's crazy to see how quickly these guys adapt back. Like, they realize, uh, we saw a couple of shots from Northern Gaming where immediately, as soon as they get back into like a normal kind of play style, they try to like trap the ball and go for dribbles and stuff again. Oh, Maestro gets bumped onto that, but ends up hitting the ball anyway. Gets credited for a save. That's going to be cleared out over to the side. Niels Cook got look over, but backball defense seen also on double goal. As the shot comes in, Northern Gaming still leading this match by a fair distance as well. Remco tries to put in a fourth. Has two minutes remaining in this matchup. All of these games so far, they have been trading wins. But it seems like they're trading like really impressive, really convincing, strong wins to each other. And that's going to be the fourth there from Remco. Yeah, it just seems to be like Northern Gaming has a really good job of working this entire map, going from one side to the other. It's just Kaunos is sitting back with nothing to do. As soon as like Northern Gaming goes up on one goal, they're like, all right, that doesn't work. So let's uh, transition to the other side and try this one. And they just keep going back and forth until they get a goal. I mean, Northern Gaming is probably one of the best teams out there at uh, lateral passes. Can't, can't agree. So this map probably suits them really well on that front as Zenzis can't flick that one into the net. If Kaunos want any chance of this, they need to get something right now. That is Jeez. the exact opposite. Remco 
is the king of double goal. Well, look at how they play this. Maestro's like, all right, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm not going to do anything. And it works out. It's like what you do. Nothing, and then it works out. So, going to continue on with this matchup. As Kaunos try and find them way, their way back into this. Northern Gaming dominating the stats line right now. Remco, three goals, four saves. 100% shooting accuracy, too. Holy cow. Same thing with Maestro. Devo's going to try and put this one straight down. That's going to go straight over to Maestro. Devo, I feel like, is just feeling uh, a little bit ignored at this point, as we've seen the longtime duo of Remco and Maestro just break out. He's just saving his energy for that Rumble game that's coming up. <laughs> I'm sure he'll have plenty of it. Yeah, that Rumble game is almost certainly coming up now as a shot comes in from Maestro. Saved by Niels Cook, but Kaunos are looking thoroughly beaten at this point. Well, I guess uh, we just had to say his name as Devo's going to get a goal. That pressure yet again. Subtle mistakes coming out. That clear just barely missing from, I think it was Niels. Because of that, Devo's able to come and pinch it back in. Six goals in four minutes. That is painful. How do you like your steak? Uh, well done, and hopefully with a side of Brazil. I like that one. I, li I do like a Brazilian steakhouse, actually. That is probably... I went there once. Probably the best food I've had, ever. Although I'm hoping we get to do a Korean barbecue at some point. Oh, yes, please. Because I've never had... There's nothing near me. Gotta remember, I'm a village boy. It's really good. Just like Northern Gaming's play right now. Certainly is. We could be on route for a Brazil on this one. And I'm going to make sure I say this one correctly so I don't get called out by Wave Punk and Carpet. It would be the first Brazil we've seen since qualifiers. So in league play. Yes, which this is not. So it still probably doesn't count. I mean, it's technically league play, just not like official weeks of, oh no. It's not something we'd be using on our stats line as we move forward. Yeah, that. As Niels Cook ends up turning, he just settles for it at that point. There is the Brazil. Northern Gaming have dominated this matchup. All I'm going to say is I really like double goal, and if you guys pick double goal, that means you get Brazils, right? Apparently. So, um, yep, not not biased towards this map at all, but please vote for it. That's using our powers for evil. We've got the loudest voices around. Eh, I think Carpet's got the loudest. Oh, no! Really? Eh. Good carpet impression. Eh, eh, <laughs> ah! Hit the bull! <laughs> okay, he's not like... <laughs> Just reminds me of the OC last night. <laughs> Do not bring that back up. <laughs> Zenzus puts that one in. 7-2, 30 seconds remaining. And Northern Gaming and Kaunos are going to see us into game number five. As these are some quicker shots coming up from Kaunos. Where was this for the rest of the match? And yep, game five will be Rumble. Probably the most... RNG game mode that we have out of all of these. Although, I almost want to give that one over to Mayhem after what we saw previously. Very, very true. But that's the beauty of uh, our last game being Rumble. I can't believe, where were these goals like four minutes ago, guys? Well, we've just hit our 10th one this game. 11's the record in uh, Narl's league, league play. play. Yes. Also held by Kaunos. Maybe we can see a record just for season three in general. Maybe. Yeah, that would be pretty good. I believe. Four seconds. Well, Make let's it see happen, if we guys. can get it. All right, let's go for this. Played over to the side. Maestro, please just score the own goal. Come on, dude. Boo. Zenzus tries to challenge that. Come on, Kaunos will not give up on this. The record is in their eyes. Zenzus gets it over. Can't turn that one in. Ah, so close, but so far away. I also said boo, and then I instantly realized that I could have said moo because of Kaunos. And now I'm mad at myself. You should be. Well, congratulations, Zenzus. Your team managed to take 17 shots. You managed to take none of them, but you still got a goal. <laughs> so, savage. Well done. Well, no, like if he's getting a goal without shooting, he's probably the most impressive player out around. That's you can't divide by zero. So no, what's that's his shooting? Infinite, that's what's, an infinite. Yeah, what's his percentage for <laughs> infinite goal shooting ratio? He's a god. He is just too good at this game. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am upset at not getting an extra goal there. However. One thing that makes me happy. Game fives, rumble. An extra rumble. Yeah, if you guys forgot, game you one got your own Game two is rumble. Game five is also rumble. So between these two teams, we saw Northern Gaming take the first one. But as you stated, it is very RNG dependent. Who the heck knows? And what? how many plungers is who going to get? That's that's what determines everything. <laughs> Whoever Kenobi gets more plungers. is going to get all of them. 
He only got like two yesterday. It was crazy. I know, but he scored both of them. Yeah, that that's, was that's why whoever gets more plungers wins. Yeah, apparently so. If you see someone running towards the uh, other net, probably means they've got a plunger. That's the only reason for it. It's either that or they're just not looking at the screen anymore. <laughs> probably like Matt, his screen just turned <laughs> off partway through that like, retro. For the, uh, the no look technique. It almost <laughs> worked. No, as someone that has tried to play a 1v1 blindfolded, not being able to see the screen does not work. The best just thing you can do is try and echo lake locate the ball. <laughs> just start yelling and see if they respond. That we were just listening for it at that point. It just does not work well, at all. Well we don't talk about that enough. Like the the actual sound in the game is really beneficial. Like if you're trying to dribble and Devo's coming up behind to bump you, you could hear his boost maybe. Double as a stop. Okay. Everyone, no one wasting <laughs> okay. time onto that at all. Ball is frozen. Unfortunately, ice does not beat fist. No, really well placed as well, that 50-50, and then frozen immediately, like you said. Niels isn't even gonna bother. He recognizes that he can't get to it in time. Jumps up and punches it, as you stated, right in the back of the net. Only 15 seconds for the first goal. Yeah, these games have turned into very high-scoring affairs. We start off as a 1-0 on drop shot, and ever since then, these teams have just gone mental with the goals that they are scoring. That's gonna drop straight down, but oh my goodness. Remco got a shot. Devo, yet again with the steal, getting that plunger. Yeah, dropping that plunger right at the very end of that, able to secure the goal. I thought that first one was in, but Devo actually doing a really good job of waiting to use the plunger as that ball was above. It probably would have threw it off center. It caused it to go out, but Literally a matter of about 10 seconds, and we're tied up yet again. Zens has got the opportunity to come straight from the kickoff, and that is going to be Niels oh, coming in. Great save. save there from Remco. And yes, that does mean we are going to get ourselves some items. The Normie goals are not allowed when you take on Northern Gaming. Niels Cook gets booted, but he gets to take the ball with him. Thanks to that magnet, the freeze comes through, and Maestro just stuck to that ball. He's going to keep going there. So useful, but Dan's his all using that power hitter. We saw that come out so big in the last one. Dan, you can do this. Okay, you get them on Devo. That's <laughs> pretty much even. That's like the epitome of doing it. Just killing him. Did it. Oh. All the way. Oh, Zenzus. Zenzus. Oh, the spike's coming through. Up. What a shot. Zenzus comes in, shows us how to do it. The spikes have been relatively quiet this entire weekend, but this time around, just jumps into the air, flails with the ball, gets himself the goal, and Kaunos are back in the lead. What a play with that spike. It looked like he actually knew what he was doing for a little bit. <laughs> he, usually, start, he started off knowing what he was doing. Everything after that improvised. Yeah, usually when you when you when you get like spikes, you just jump and then you hold air roll and and hope. But he like dodged two people and everything. It was, it was nuts. That was very impressive as well considering the timer that you have on the spikes is much lower than it was, Dan. Almost turning that one straight in. The power hitter is back out for Maestro. He's going to try and chase this one down. Surprised he didn't go straight for the Demon Zenzus. But it is going to be cleared away. Kaunos in the lead in game five. Uh -oh. And we've got spikes from Remco. Puts himself up high. But oh, there is one of counter. the counters to it. Using that grappling hook. It's like an aimbot. Fantastic play. Don't even have to use any of your boost for it either. But you see these guys starting to use their power-ups a little bit more on the offensive side as Niels trying to pull that back in with his plunger. His power-ups in three seconds here. Let's see what he gets. It's a grapple. I do like, though, oh, Devo comes out with a grapple. Then Niels Kirk responds with a grapple of his own. Stan's going to try and chase this one down. I do like that so many of these abilities can pretty much cancel out others. Others. It's like we've got an extreme carbol version of rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, it's uh, one of those things that... At first, some of the things weren't necessarily balanced as a plunger gets another goal. We talked about it. You think he's just bad as he runs past it, but no, he's using that plunger to the best of his abilities. Yep, Dan, that is pretty much the easiest goal you can get in this. If you get a plunger, as long as an item is not there, like a freeze or maybe even a power, like a, a boxing glove to try and hit it away, you're almost guaranteed a goal if no one picks you out. I think that was the most surprising thing about that, uh, that spike goal that we saw. Was that nobody like used the like the distortion or any of that kind of stuff to get it off? I mean, did anyone really even have a distortion in that one? Remember, you might know the counters of things. It does not necessarily mean you no, have not, the counters of things. No, it's not up to you at all. It's it's just an entire psionics please moment. You might have an entire team of uh, disruptors just looking, just going. We're going to make the first one go faster, but Maestro evens up this game, and this is turning into a real match real quick. Yeah. I the ball actually over the top of him. He uses the Haymaker to shoot it back up.
comes right back down him and he takes a shot easily over the top of the last two defenders. Just caught off guard altogether. Maestro's going to go for this kickoff, but Dan's got him there just in time. Remco putting that one up high, and the winner of this will go over to the semifinals. That's going to nab you a nifty extra $1,000. This, as much fun of it as it is, there are things on the line as Devo gets that power hitter. Going to follow what? it straight up. Evens up the matchup. And what a game we are having. We talked about it on the desk. Winning a series, because this is a single elimination, pretty much secures you like another $1,000. And Devo, like we said, he was channeling all that energy last game to come in. Ties it up. 148 left on the clock. Game number five. One of the Northern Gaming specials coming out using a double tap or a rebound from that backboard or anywhere on your opponent's goal and then following it straight up. You give them that and then you give them a power up that makes them hit harder. You are not saving that whenever you want to. It's Maestro gets that ball moving yet again using the plunger. He's going to try and follow this one up. He's got the setup straight there. Devo comes in and he had that power hit yet again. But now Zensus, he's got himself the magnet. He needs to control this ball. Frozen straight as it's towards the net. Double magnet coming out. But eventually cleared away by Devo. Kaunos, one of their best opportunities to retake the lead. One minute remaining in this. That's going to be dangerous as Remco uses the grappling hook and is able to get there just in time. Fantastic grapple hook as well. Waiting from Remco as that ball is going back and forth. Uses it to pinch it off the wall. But now the Dan's spike for spikes. Dan. Oh, no, the puncher. Power hit coming out from Zensis. He actually gets a hit off of it. We talk a lot about the damage that comes out from it. But as Devo soon as you touch somebody. Can go for the wall aerial. <laughs> no, he's going to get completely stuffed on that one. The ice coming through as a counter. Now, Dan's going to try and put that one straight down. But is not able to. 37 seconds remaining here. One goal could be all it takes to move on to the semifinals. As here comes the grappling up, Maestro <laughs> turns that into the net! And it is a complete cluster, but the important thing is Maestro has taken the lead. Oh, Devo, you savage. He plays it inside and then just goes for that last guy back. We talk about how important demos are in the goalie. No, I'm going to use a tornado and blow you out of the way. And the important thing there is we saw Dan try to use that boot. I don't think the boot has any effect on the grappling hook. Uh, no. The grappling hook is basically juggernaut mode. As soon as you get a hold of it, you are going towards that ball. Nothing is going to stop you, apart from maybe a switcher. I just picture him like singing, can't stop me now, because he's having such a good time as he's like flying through. Could be important. 12 seconds remaining here. Niels Cook has got spikes in the background, so if he can get a hold of the ball, could be important. He's going to oh, miss no. that entirely. No. Maestro is going to keep following that one up. That's going to be turned into the net, and that is game. Northern Gaming are going to proceed through to the semifinals. Now, the big difference as well with uh, with the way that Rumble works is in the last couple of seconds, rather than power-ups taking 10 seconds after goal reset, I think it's only like within the three. So as soon as it hits like the kickoff, they should have power-ups. Well, yeah, you can three see that right there. Three, three seconds, seconds so for this. So one second left, they're going to have their power-ups. So they need to score it with one second remaining which is very unlikely. Northern Gaming, after a rock, Rick Rock rickety series, a roller coaster of matches, have made it through to the next round. And they're so happy they're just going to leave and go and celebrate. I'm sure that's what they're doing. Yeah, like, congratulatory high fives all around. Tons of shots coming out from both sides, but the ones for Northern Gaming hitting the net a little bit better. So Northern Gaming have made their way through to the next round, and that means we are going to be getting Northern Gaming versus Mocket Esports in the first semi-final. Mocket getting through very convincingly against a lackluster flip side squad. That's a good way to put it. But that is going to be a heck of a game. Northern Gaming, nuts. when they can get it in their way, and if they, they look so good in Rumble right now. Hey, you have to play it at least once, so fantastic job by them. Securing the win by the end. Well heck of a series we've had here. I, myself, am very tired after casting that. So, <laughs> let's pass this one over to our analyst desk. Thank you, Shogun and Lawler. Congrats to Northern Gaming all the way to five games, getting the victory, going to the semifinals. Axel Toss back here at the analyst desk alongside Gibbs and Findable Carpet. Gentlemen, Northern Gaming. I was a little bit worried for them going into that fourth game, but then they got the standard a different map, but the standard sets of the ball and whatnot back in their court, able to push it to game five, and then securing the rumble. Pretty nice play from them. Yeah, we talk about uh, double goal, how it's basically standard, a little bit different right around the net, but besides that, it's pretty simple, and it showed that Northern Gaming is a much better team than Cow knows when it comes to standard play, and also in the rumble play. Both games very dominant. For, well, 
Uh, game two was dominant. Game five was a little bit closer, but they were using the power-ups extremely well. Devo, great power hitters from him, uh, which was surprising because he had great power hitters there, but then when it went to Mayhem, uh, Kaunos just blew him apart. They honestly did it. And in the wise words of Shogun, they had a Rick Rock rickety series for yeah. both teams, getting so close back and forth on the wins. Uh, I mean, it's really hard to attribute exactly what it was. Uh, there's a lot of kind of manic uh, to, things that happen in Rumble. Yeah, but to be fair, Northern Gaming won because they had a Brazil. And once is you that, have a is Brazil. Is that how it works? Is exactly. That, like, yeah. If you have a Brazil, they'll but, probably but win the whole I tournament. Mean, now. But hold on. The results of the map was not a Brazil. It, a Brazil happened yes. during the game. Technically, but yeah. as long as it happens during the game, that is good enough well, for me. I mean, okay. that's the big controversy is it, it, does it, it count as a Brazil if you just got it, or do you have to end the game with the Brazil score? I feel like it counts. That's why I wore my Northern game in Jersey today. I see it it nice only costs like eighty dollars oh. like in their <laughs> store. So I was really excited to get this jersey. Super um, impressive. Right? It's it's really nice. Like those esports jerseys, top notch. Yours is looking really it's nice, right? uh, genuine. Yours looks unique. It's a it's a it's a one a one off, isn't it? No, it was it's just right on their store. But anyway, Cow knows <laughs> they lost really though because yep. of, because of their logo. Single elimination, Cow knows is out. Northern Gaming moves on. They're gonna yes. be playing up against Mocket. Uh, the next match for the mid season mayhem will be Gale Force against the Leftovers. Now Gale Force, they used to be Pocket Aces. Not any longer. They are now Gale Force. And by the way, we need you to vote. We got to figure out what maps three and four are going to look like. So the voting is open right now. Go to the Twitch chat. There's a straw poll. Cloud Fuel standing by. He'll answer any questions you have. Go vote for what you want to see in this next match. It is Gale Force versus Leftovers. Next.